Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. We're all friends, we're here to have fun, but our story can include graphic violence, drug use, sexual content, and other mature themes. Content warnings can be found in the show notes. We talk at our table about safety, comfort, and consent, both as players and storytellers. We know what to expect, we're all excited to be here, and we want you to feel the same. So listener discretion is advised. Now, let's walk the path of night. Last time on Path of Night. Johnny, Neil, and Wynn retreated with Britta and Miles in tow. To stave off his hunger, Johnny fed on Neil. Wynn hunted like a creep. They met back up at the Haven, where Eden led Miles' ghouls against him. Together, the Cordery managed to break the Setite magic turning allies into enemies. Wynn has taken a moment to... She still has Neil holding her shirt against his head, probably pointlessly. Um, But she's sitting with in a tank top, um, elbows on knees, contemplating before finally speaking up. So I think there's a lot of damage control we need to get on. And from where I'm sitting, there's five things we need to get done. And Just five? It before we can do anything else. Uh, We need to help Miles' employee on the floor over there, and she nods kind of at the ghoul. I'm already on it. Okay. uh, Johnny's actually in the midst of basically um, having the other five ghouls donate blood to him so that he can uh, feed blood back to the ghoul he overdrank from. Understood. Is it possible for me to get nine blood from these five guys? Yes. Then I will return four blood to the uh, ghoul that I that I took, and I will be full. We need to get a butt on the throne, because I think the only way we can try and contain Vital and the damage he's doing is to have someone with some authority blood hunt this guy. I mean, e- either either way, um, Miles needs to get up, because the Sabat aren't just coming here now, they're coming here specifically to kill Prince Miles Davenport. Well, if we need to buy time, we can make someone look like Prince Miles Davenport. Well, hell, let's just get Eden out of here, and we'll we'll see if Ira can do it. It's on the list, because one of the other ones on the list of things we need to do is uh, we need to control Vital, which we've proven (laughs) we're not up to the task. Control him? Damage control him. Oh, Um, okay. We, we've proven we're not up for that task, and I, I think that's okay to know where our limits are. <sighs> um, but I think we've got Theo Bell and Xavier in town. We've got an Archon of the Camarilla and I mean, a gang full of Gangrel. At the very least, he he needs to be the the Archons need to be informed that there's a d- d- crazy uh, Sabat mole with burning half the city and and informing the Sabat that it's time to come. They need to know that they're coming now. Yeah. So. Um, we need to wake up Miles and Britta because yes. that would be the easiest way is if Miles is the one making these calls. But if he's not, then we have other options for that. But I think there are people we could call, but we have a guy sitting with a stake in his chest over there. Do you trust that guy? He's a Tremere. Weirdly, we didn't kill him. I do. Neil looks extremely dubious, but seems unwilling to like argue the point. Like they would know better, but he looks really suspicious. He's the, somehow a Tremere that other Tremere get that look in their eye over. That doesn't make me feel any better. But I think I, he I'll, would help us. Oh, okay. I trust is a nebulous thing these days, but I I think he would help us. That's true. And if not, do we have a number for someone with the Asimites that we trust? I would call Nara. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not familiar if, if she knows the path of life's water, but she has to at least know somebody who does. But well, you're right. Until we get him up, I, you know, I, keeping the word contained that anything has happened to Miles at all. Right. Well, 
if we're if we're gonna unstake Ira, we gotta figure out th- something for Eden. Um, I could hide her. What if we take her to the hunters? That was my thought. What? Ramirez would be the one to call. Would would she be safe with them? Ramirez is a little bit of a bleeding heart. I mean, that's true. Who's the lady who helped you? She would probably also be sympathetic to Eden. That's Sheila. I I agree. And honestly, if they're going to be looking into Hell House, and I know that was part of their plan at some point, it, maybe it wouldn't hurt to have someone there who could undo damage that vicissitude does. Well, um, that doesn't necessarily seem like it's keeping Eden safe, but also, to that point, um, you'd be honest with the hunters, right? That oh yeah, it's putting a huge target on their back to have this girl with them? I would be... A hundred percent give them all the information that they would need. Okay. Okay. And I'm still hungry, so if if we could... I... Yes. Uh, I don't know if Miles' people... I mean, these aren't all of his schools. He's got like a dozen or something. I, 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 not even necessarily seeing feet off the ghouls, but he's got to have a herd or something. I, yeah. I also... Johnny, ever since you fed on me, I, I, I've been... Tell you what. Chomping at the bit, too. Um, Neil... Why don't you see if you can round up some more of Miles' people for uh, for blood. I'll go make a call to Ramirez and see if he'll come for Eden. And when maybe you start uh, talking to Ira while he's uh, incapacitated and maybe kind of give him a heads up on what we need from him. So when we unstake him, it'll be a little bit less of a weird conversation. That's a good idea. Miles gets a phone call. My phone is on silent. Because of the stealth job. Mm-hmm. Guess no one hears it. Wynn will take Ira and hoist him over her shoulder and kind of take him to, I don't want to be in a bathroom so much, but just a room away from the main hallway. So it's probably a bathroom and she dumps him in the bathtub. She kind of straddles the side of the bathtub, one leg pulled up in sort of a perch. And she kind of leans over and starts to speak to Ira. So I'm really hoping that your message is what I interpreted was correct. Because if not, I know you're going to be pissed. But if you're the person, I think you are. You're going to want to be here for the rest of this. Our people are down. Miles is... Miles needs you. Britta needs you. Eden is safe. But we're in a bad way and we've got a fucking Methuselah Ventru, allegedly, running around with Obten. He's torching a residential area looking for us. Clan Nosferatu has taken a bad hit. And I'm sorry that we've kept you just freaking in this state for so long and I it's a solid I owe you from me, but I'm going to take the stake out and hopefully you're willing to talk. And she'll reach down. She doesn't really pray, but she kind of sends an intent to the universe and pulls the stake from his chest. I take it, Sheriff, that you didn't go and investigate where I had been staying based on the things you just said. I didn't want to draw any more connections between you and us. He sighs. I sort of got that from my continued presence here. We're not going to give you back to the people who want to kill you. That was... He shakes his head. Never mind. It's water under the bridge, I guess. I had a limited amount of time to try and explain myself in a way that wouldn't got all of us immediately caught. But I guess it's a bit late for that now, isn't it? It's a bit late for almost anything. When Ira says that, he gets an uncomfortable, chilling sensation, a feeling he's had before when watched by a counselor. So... Sheriff. And his, like, demeanor gets a little bit more rigid. You didn't kill me, 
for assaulting you and the prince in his own haven. I assume there's some sort of thing that you want from me. I'm willing to help in exchange for my life. You got it. Am I giving you your life by asking you to do these things? The Tremere, as always, are happy to help support and defend the Camarilla. The Tremere are never happy. That's bullshit. You just need to get to know us better. He does not smile, despite sort of making a joke. Mm -hmm. Is this weird for Ira? You don't really know him that well, I don't think. We got pretty chummy. I mean, I don't know. Is that like an empathy roll or something? I have no idea. Perception plus empathy. One success. When you first unstaked him, he seemed like annoyed and more of a person Mm -hmm. in a very like, damn it, I had plans and this just didn't, there was a miscommunication and things did not go the way I thought they would. Not in a you didn't get the message way, but in a like, fuck, I was playing chess and we stopped at move two. And then all of a sudden when he got a little bit more rigid, he feels very similar to honestly the way he did in the conversation before he passed you the note. Not like a programming thing, but more of a, like, all of a sudden he's acting a little bit more cautious, talking more about the Tremere than himself, the Camarilla rather than you. Wynne watches when Ira's demeanor shifts, and it signals her in some way to be more guarded herself. You said you can wake people up without making them drink Vitae. The Path of Blood is the first thing that any decent Tremere, frankly, any Tremere, learns in their study of thaumaturgical mastery. You give very long yeses. She will go and signal for him to wait here. It would be easier, Sheriff, as she leaves, if my things would be returned to me. My gloves, my... Accoutrement. Are you going to attack us again? They would aid me in efficiently performing the tasks I'm being asked. That's not answering my question. I suppose we're going to have to have a little trust, Sheriff. Wynne kind of considers this. And sighs a little. I will bring them. Thank you. And she probably was the one who stowed his stuff once they took it from him. Um, She probably put it back in the bedroom he'd been using. So she'll grab probably like a a photo box sort of thing uh, with his stuff in it. And she will also grab Britta. And bring her to the bathroom. When you go downstairs uh, from the bathroom, uh, you see Johnny hanging up his cell phone at the tail end of a conversation. All right, I'll see you soon. He's got Eden next to him. He's kind of holding her by the hand. We'll have to do those pancakes some other time, kid. All right, we're heading out. Be safe. Uh, Contact me when you're coming back. I'll be fast. And Johnny will head out the front door with Eden to go meet up with Ramirez. And when we'll do all of that other stuff. So you bring the gear over to Ira. Ira. When you come back into the bathroom, Ira is using a toothbrush mm-hmm. that was in probably like a guest toothbrush or whatever to like clean some of the excess blood off of his shoes that has dried there over the last, you know, few weeks or however long it's been. Cold water, hydrogen peroxide. I know. The only thing you said that sounds a little bit like the normal Ira as a person Ira. But then when the stuff is handed back, he pulls on the gloves that he used to have on Mm -hmm. uh, with the arcane symbols, takes the coat. One of the things is uh, another one of those stakes, like the one he had thrown at Britta. When will take that before she lets him put the coat on? I'd like my things, Sheriff. Yeah, I'm not going to give you the thing that'll incapacitate me. He looks at her for a minute, shrugs. Can I have it when I leave? They're hard to make. Yes. What do you need? She will 
bring Britta in. I think it's kind of self-explanatory. I suppose so. And he flexes his fingers, slowly reaches down, and puts a hand over Britta's heart. And then Lex, I'll use Path of Blood. Roll for the Blood Rage. I will spend the three, and her body, uh, anything that's not ag, just automatically spends the blood and begins to knit itself back together and rouse into the more human-looking Britta out of torpor. Britta becomes conscious. As the magic works, the first thing is Britta curling up like she's trying to protect herself from that blade coming up through her stomach. Her hands go to it. Just as they flush with life, that illusion that her blush of health gives her. And slowly, as fingertips trace skin, there's still plenty of damage on her. But awake, she looks up at the two of you. Eyes going wide at the sight of Ira, and looking to win for assurance, looking back to Ira, trying to figure out what's even going on. When Britta starts to stir and grab for the wounds that she thinks are coming, but aren't, uh, Wynne will kind of like put her hand over Britta's hands, knowing how cold they're going to be, and just kind of makes something of a hushing noise and feels, hey, 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 it's okay. It's hey. not okay. Things are bad, but you're back. Did we get him? Is Fester okay? Who? Marcus. Member of Clan Nosferatu. Marcus Vitel seems to be a sleeper agent for the Sabbat. He seems to have been a mole in the Camarilla. And way more powerful than he seemed. Interesting. Britta, uh, if you can walk, we should have... Neil should be getting some stuff brought over so that we can start getting patched up. Okay, I am... I have a lot of damage to heal, and I don't think I can do it all tonight. You don't need to worry about that. We just need to get to... Just get us to limping. That's all we need. And you... Britta looks at Ira. You got me back up? A favor to the sheriff. In exchange for my life. Correct, sheriff? One of the two, yeah. Well, thank you. He nods. Britta being one of the members of the Coterie he doesn't know as well and is still suspicious of. Wynn kind of, like, helps her stand. Everyone's... Everyone else is okay, right? We're getting there. I'll try and get an explanation from Neil. Godspeed. <laughs> um, so Wynn will kind of help her out of the bathroom and hoist Miles up and bring him in. Miles' hair is a mess. His clothes are disheveled. His skin is shriveled and tight against his flesh. He's very much in torpor. Wynn will kind of nod to Britta, like, trying to be reassuring, but... She's not good at that sort of thing. Honestly, when she sees Miles come past her as she's trying to go find Neil for an update, she lingers and stops to see if he'll be all right. She doesn't leave the bathroom. Wynn doesn't make her. She'll set him on the floor. As Wynn brings him in and Ira sees that the prince is like totally disheveled, looks between Britta and Wynn and just says... Would someone do his grace the favor of preserving his dignity and finding him a change of clothes? That's not my forte, but she sets him down and immediately starts, like, raking her when, fingers through his hair. When, um, I'll go get something and, and a comb. Okay. Probably better. My hands are pretty gross. Britta pauses like she was going to say something, like she was going to agree. She holds back the words. When gives her a tiny smirk. That seems to kind of comfort Britta, but she's so confused and this is such an emergency and she's hurting that she goes to Miles's closet. She picks out something suitable for, well, she perceives that we're still in a dangerous situation. So she's looking for the sort of thing he might fight in. And she brings back a comb as well. Before she goes down, Britta or Wynn will call spare glasses too. Okay. And she goes to Miles's room to find these things. Anything happen? Well, oh, you're gonna need to make a roll, otherwise get lost in the <laughs> <maze>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 
I need a self control roll difficulty eight as you uh, risk getting lost in Miles' stuff. <laughs> it's probably fucking fair. <laughs> no, that's a real rule. I know, Go yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's a, a one and a seven. I'm presuming six to be the difficulty. That is correct. So, this is a wash. When Britta doesn't come back. We'll we'll deal with she like straightens out Miles' clothes so that he doesn't look terrible. (laughs) Petting the suits. (laughs) Miles has a lot of well crafted shit in his closet. Ira looks actually like legitimately regretful that Miles is gonna wake up and not look okay. And then just just sighs and goes, Well then I suppose I should do it anyways. And leans down, fixes the collar on his jacket, despite the fact that there was like a fucking sword wound through the mm-hmm. back, and then puts a hand over his heart, and will do the same thing as he did to Britta. And with the same amount of success, well, one more, but it rounds out to three blood that I can spend. Ira rests his hand over Miles' heart, spends three of his blood to heal three of his wounds and bring him also out of torpor. Miles, you become conscious. How am I feeling? Underdressed. (laughs) Well, a moment ago you were in a fight, and then you saw a horrible fate befall Breda, and then everything went dark. Yes, I'm also talking about the effects of the curse. You're okay. So that no longer is... Nope. I uh, open one eye, look around, recognize where I'm at, Hey. Good evening, Your Grace. I'm gonna assume that things didn't go well. We're not dead. And that's about the best takeaway we've got. Alright, well that's good news to start with. Also, I heard him a little bit. From what your sheriff has said, it's been a harrowing evening for all of you. Are we feeling okay? Ira just looks over at Wynn. I don't know how to answer that. Got it. So what do we owe Ira for his help? We let him walk out the front door. Is there anything else we can offer you that would make things easier? He like gets kind of a little bit of a smile on his face. If you're looking to award me boons for my actions, your grace, who would I be to say no? He's got kind of like a half smile on his face. Like He's not 100% serious, but also if you gave him boons, he would not say no. I would offer up some boons, but you'd have to be around to collect them. Well, as always, as I expressed to the sheriff, despite how there may have been some miscommunications in the past, Clan Tremere is always willing to support and defend the Camarilla. Of course. Well... We do have an imminent siege coming up. Then perhaps I should speak to the members of my clan about what will be done. Most of them have left the city at this point. You might be the only one left in the city. Well, then perhaps I will have to rectify that. Very unclear whether he means go get more Tremere or leave. (laughs) I may need a representative from Clan Tremere here, and since there's no one else I can quite find, it would be poor business to let you just go before, especially since we are very much surrounded by danger. You were also here to help to gain my assistance in a task, weren't you? I was. And if I could complete that task and... Return, at least not in complete shame, to the Tremere for my failure. I would not be averse to that either. Again, Sheriff, Your Grace, it might be time for a little trust. Either way. Fair enough. Wynne will not say anything, but she will hold out the splinter servants to him. Uh, There's just the one. That's left because the other one got used on Britta. Yep. And he'll just reach out and take it. 
Oh, also, technically, I guess wind would be, like, taking damage for touching it, but you have so much fortitude that you're probably fine. But it definitely burns to touch. Mm. Uh, and he takes it and ties it off inside of his coat. For now, I've been stuck here for a bit. If I might take my leave for the moment, you seem busy. That was the deal. My phone. He pats his pockets and pulls it out. Uh, you have my number, I believe? Yep. Yes. Well then. Go get to work then. I wish you both good luck. You too. Let us know you if you need well. anything. And he sort of stiffly starts walking out. Looks down at like the pile of unconscious ghouls and shit. And was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> cannot quite keep the like, what the fuck did I miss? And when like, just- he was aware for that, but still, because he was there. But like, you he was st- see it. he was staked and his eyes were closed. So just, it was a series of thuds. So searing, seeing the consequence of a series of thuds and being like, what the fuck? And Ira steps outside and then pulls his phone out of his pocket uh, to make a call. It's actually a compact. He was actually going to powder his His nose. phone is super dead. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> shit. He definitely pulls it out. So you see him walk out the front door, pull out his phone to like make a call, look at it, like do that thing where your phone's dead and you, you refuse to accept that your phone is dead. So mm-hmm. you, like you, you hit the buttons a couple of times. Like, Motherfucker. Um, and then there is like a slight glow and static around his hands and a audible snap. And then he presses the button. And the phone turns on and oh. kind of shuts the door behind him, turns, looks at Miles for a second and then gives him a really big hug. That good, huh? You get a fair chance to strangle me when I tell you I broke your present from the snake people. Son of a bitch. But it that was so much magic swordsman ability. Yeah, but it was also way more turning your ghouls and Eden against us than <sighs> oh, we needed. Of course. Yeah, what did you think would happen? I don't know. Okay, just <laughs> hug me for a minute and we we have business to get to. Okay. I mean, I can't blame them for trying. <laughs> You'd be disappointed if they didn't. It's it's very true. Okay, so I will bring you up to speed, but I think we first need to go get Britta out of your closet. I sent her there for a change of clothes, and I'm guessing you have really nice stuff. That makes sense. I'll go get her. As Ira is waiting for pickup, he does hear the sound of a vehicle pulling up to him. The black SUV rolls into the driveway. And when the door opens, it's Johnny Saxon stepping out. He unwraps a fresh pack of Morley's, pops one in his mouth, and takes a second one out and offers it to you. Ira reaches out, takes the Morley, a little wary of what this interaction might be, but pops into his mouth, a little snap and light them both for them, and takes a long drag first before just going, Seneschal. Ira? Johnny nervously glances towards the haven. Am I going to like what I find in there, or am I going to come back out here and beat you to death? Well, I suppose you would have to ask the sheriff and his grace. But they're both up and could tell you. The brother? Did not return from his grace's wardrobe, but as far as I am aware, could also tell you the same. Johnny smiles a little bit. It's good to hear. I'd hate to have to ruin the friendship we have. So would I, Seneschal. Lex, do I still feel like I'm being watched? Uh, no, just for that conversation. As Ira is smoking with Johnny, having this like kind of weird, tense talk, he actually seems to relax a little bit. I'm sorry, by the way. I had a limited amount of time to express myself, and I may not have done it in a manner that was helpful, but I was trying my best to do what needed to be done. That doesn't answer all the questions I have, but I don't think you're able to answer all the questions I have. You any chance to meet Neil in there? Not while I was conscious. That's a shame. I think the two of you would like each other. I doubt it. You sticking around in the city at all? 
I'm not sure yet. I guess that's going to have to depend. I am aware, and he gives him kind of a pointed look, that the girl is still in the city. So, to my regret, probably. But I think there might be bigger things happening. Like Vitel and the Sabbat. So I've heard. And my business with the sheriff is not concluded yet. It depends, I think, on how much my superiors think that I have failed. Mm. Or whether they think I have betrayed them, in which case you probably won't see me again. I don't suppose you, uh, you want to share any of your insights into how you're able to get around thaumaturgy. I do not. Mm. Johnny kind of frowns at that. Is there thaumaturgy you need to get around? Marcus Vitell. So the sheriff said he is in possession of thaumaturgical ability. And of tenebration. He's pretty wily for a venture. Something to look into then. There's records. What about a ward? How do you break that? How do you break it? Or how do I break it? Either. I would simply make it mine. Turn it against whoever built it. Make it my own ward. Well, how do you just break it? Find the ritual circle. The things that are inlaid. You have to get past the ward, unfortunately. That's how they're designed. But if you can find someone who can get past that ward. Wards are individual. A ward against a ghoul won't keep out a kindred. A ward against a kindred won't keep out a mortal. Find someone who can get past, have them smash it. It's the simple, dirty way. The fastest way, if you're not so thaumaturgically inclined. Destroy the ward. Have someone who is capable of getting past it, who is not affected by it, go in and do it. Depending on where it is, could be simple or difficult. Some places have inset wards of silver, copper, metal. It could be difficult to break, especially subtly. But if it was hasty, salt, chalk, easy to stop. Hmm. Find out who the ward doesn't impact. Have them go do it. Tremir Chantry, most everyone will be warded. So the person you would have to find is the person allowed inside, but for a hasty ward on a haven? He shrugs. Hmm. Well, if you ever want to teach me more about how to undo any thaumaturgy, I understand that's the magician giving away his secrets. But I'm getting sick and tired of running into this bullshit. I know. To put it bluntly, Seneschal, Clans like the Bruja getting sick and tired of not being able to deal with the potency of thaumaturgy is exactly why Clan Tremere doesn't want those outside of it to know. Well, let's hope these final nights last long enough long enough that, that long-term thinking does you good. Ira takes a big drag on the cigarette, looks up at the sky where, Lex, presumably that big-ass red star is still shining. Probably way worse than Way you worse, I assume. And then looks back at Johnny and shrugs. Probably not. But if I wasn't any use, he just kind of leaves the thought unsaid. Oh, and Ira? Seneschal. Don't you dare fucking tell anyone if I ask you to teach me anything. I got a bad reputation to hold up. Actually gets a, like, a laugh, like a chuckle out of Ira, like a genuine sort of like... <laughs> well, if you're interested in learning that kind of thing, not that I could teach it to you, but the first step is Latin. It's about then that Ira's ride pulls up, taxi cab. Good night, Seneschal. Good night, Ira. Can't say whether or not I hope to see you again. And he gets into the cab. Cab takes off, and Johnny heads in. Johnny, after your conversation with Ira, you head on inside and find both 
Miles, and Britta Mobile. Oh, thank God. It's good to see the two of you back on your feet. It's good to be back on my feet. Yeah. So what did I miss? Anything interesting? Hold on. Let me check my phone. Wind comes up with a suit. I'm sorry, Miles. Your your closet's really nice, though. I don't know why you're apologizing. It's like a compliment to have a Torador lost in my closet. <laughs> Wind hands him a pair of glasses. Thank you. All right. Let's see if anything important happens. I check my phone. Miles, you have six missed calls. Do I know the numbers? They're all from the same number. Your sire. Oh. I will return the phone call. <laughs> Young Peterson speaking. Miles here. Miles, where are you? I've currently returned to my home after finding the mole in my city. Her power, Justicar Lucind, has arrived to New Haven. She has gathered those who will be participating in your war council and is ready to transport you to Hartford. All right. You must arrive here immediately. So I should go meet this Jessica. Arrive here immediately. He hangs up. Is everything okay? No. Um, there's a Justicar here of the Ventru, and I'm to leave immediately. So I'm going to go put on my better suit, and I need to get going. Um, who is going with you? How's everyone else doing? I just, I don't think you should be alone. I, that's my, kind of my thing, too. All right. Well, everybody go put on their nice clothing and we'll leave in five. Well, we just can't leave the city un- empty. So who do you want to go with you? We're going to the Elysium, so we can make a decision there. Okay. <laughs> well, I still look like I have giant sections torn out of my neck, but, you know, other than that, fine. Neil comes in. Uh, I, I, yeah, what, there's... So I talked to your herd and, and everything. Um, they should be... The the, peop- the ghouls should be okay. Um where are we going? What's happening? There's a, a p- Venture Justicar is here. I mean, I need to go meet them immediately. I'm assuming this is to discuss Vitel? Uh, unclear, but my sire was not particularly explaining. Is the- he ever? Actually, yes. You don't think he's maybe mad about what was said on the roof at the race? No idea, but I'm getting the sense of urgency here. Okay. So, I, I mean, it, I know you're being summoned, but if, if it's at the Elysium, I I don't want us to not be together right now. I I feel that makes me deeply uncomfortable. Okay, then let's, then let's all go to Elysium. Miles. Yes. You feel the pull of a summons. I, I don't think there's much I can do about that. No, there's can not. Can I communicate at all? Nope. Well, he tucks his phone in. Uh... And just heads out towards the cars. Oh, uh, uh, just mm. immediately out the front door. So, so there's no getting cleaned up. We're going now, huh? Uh, I'll run and grab some nice clothes for people. I'll be right back. I'll I'll wait with Britta. You guys go be with him. Uh, I know we will get in a car and come after you, but go with him now. Make she- sure she does not get lost in there. And uh, Johnny goes out with Miles to drive him to the Elysium. Neil on winds say so. Hurries out after Johnny and Miles. Britta is spending a blood to get things together quickly for people and is careful with the warning that the closet had already gotten her to avert her eyes and only grab what's necessary. Wynn will go with her so she doesn't get stuck in the closet. Will uh, Miles go with Johnny in the car? Yeah, it's almost expedient way to get there. Johnny will make the trip slower than he usually would to buy uh, the girls some time. Okay. When once they have the bundles of people's clothes and brushes and whatever else they need to grab. She will pick one of the other cars, probably a less showy one. Miles described a less showy car. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there is Rita's car, which you could take the bronze BMW. Yep. All right. Do you want me to drive or do you want to drive? Um, I'll do it. Okay. Well, aside from a bit of traffic, everyone makes it to the Elysium. Outside, there's a number of kindred who are hanging out, smoking in circles, whispering to each other about whatever the hell is going on and why Justicar has arrived in New Haven. And then inside, it is this perfect paradox of a crowd of kindred who do not want to be here, but are too curious to flee. 
<laughs> and seated in Miles' throne is a woman and a power suit. She's dark brown bob. Resting across her lap is a long sword of exquisite make. On her right side are three archons who are dressed in a fashion similar to hers. To her left is Jan Peterzun, who has a pin indicating uh, St. Michael on his lapel. And on his left are three Joseans three Josian archons who also bear the mark of St. Michael on their lapels. They all look studious, perfectly kempt, everything in proper order. Lucinde, though she does not speak, her presence holds the room both captivated and as a hostage to her will. I go forward and present myself as required by the summoning. You approach your sire. Oh, the sire was very good. I will still. Looks like he's all business, so I will give him the uh, bow and whatnot. Because Archon is still, he's a pretty good rating in terms of all the political standing. To be correct. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Especially since you know who he is, Archon too. Archon Peterson, a child. And, and then I will an even deeper bow. The power. While he presents himself, Johnny. I'm assuming the rest of the coterie will file in and take positions. Not far off from Miles. Wynne has likely done a car change where she got changed in the car while Britta's driving. She put on her button-down shirt, her vest that she likely stole from Kabir, uh, her black slacks, shit kickers. It's not likely that Britta was able to do much help fashion-wise to the Coterie, but she might have been able to pass out a couple suit jackets. Johnny comes in battle-fucked up and covered in blood. As you guys are making your way in, uh, to catch up to Miles, when you were stopped by a wild-looking man with a, like, kind of tattered old trench coat that was probably once very nice, mm-hmm. and these big, thick shit-kicker boots, and you know it to be the gangrel Xavier. Holy shit. I'm Thank glad you, for you made it. Yeah, you, you too. Her power has arrived. Whatever's going on in this town has Hardestad spooked. Hardestad tends to destroy things that make him uncomfortable. You need to be careful here. Tell me how to get out of this. He, like, literally almost puts you in a headlock as he pulls you aside. He's just this very, like, Mm -hmm. rough, physical dude. Oh, thank God someone is showing me what to do. Oh, God. (laughs) And when he pulls you aside, he says this. Hardestad will sacrifice anything. Anything to preserve his secrets. You play along. You put your tail between your legs and you make it clear that you are not a risk to his secrets. And you make sure the people you care about do the same thing. Because if you don't, he will just cede this entire region to the Sabbat. And let them burn down everything that represents a threat to his power. Wynne is kind of looking up at him from the borderline headlock. Um, uh, And maybe for the first time in a long time, she is looking up at someone almost like a child. Like, I am in so far over my head. And she is, like, soaking up what he is saying. Okay, what... Have you been to the house? I saw it. It looks an awful lot like what I saw. Yeah. So, he, like, licks this, like, he's got this huge meaty clawed hairy hands and he just like he licks his hand and just starts pawing the side of your face like adjusting your hair and making sure you're (laughs) presentable to the justicar okay okay thank you for being here the gang are here to back you up just like we said we would if you gotta be gone for a while we'll be watching over New Haven just don't be gone too long I don't want to leave. I know. He kind of slinks off and he just, he's got, he he looks like a fucking monster in a trench coat Mm -hmm. and has like just this really sturdy stature to him. When now probably with a cow lick from his adjustments, will try and make her way to each of the coterie members. I guess she'll start with Britta. Okay. 
Here's how we survive this. According to Xavier, make sure that Hardestet knows that we're not a threat to his secrets. And that's kind of all she says. Britta says to Wynn, you tell Johnny, I'll tell Neil. Okay. Britta goes and does so. Uh, as does Wynn. She walks up seemingly under the guise of... She, like, licks a tissue and starts, like, trying to wipe the blood off of Johnny's neck. Johnny looks back annoyed at you and kind of shakes you off. Like, he uh, he is perfectly happy looking the way he is. It's a ruse. Just look at me for a second. He glances back. We get out of this by making sure Hardestat knows that we don't, we're not going to surrender his secrets. He will not hesitate to cede us to the Sabbat. Johnny gives you a look that you think is reassuring at first, but you also see a little bit of Johnny's fucking attitude behind, simmering behind the eyes, and he kind of slowly nods at you. Wynn kind of makes sure to lock eyes, says, I don't like it either, and does like an affectionate head bop, forehead to forehead, before walking away. She pockets the tissue. She does not leave the Seneschal's blood lying around anywhere. And Britta goes to approach Neil, playing much the same game. She leans in like she's trying to fix his lapel, trying to get a tie on him. And brushing past his ear, she says, We have to make sure that we don't look like a threat to Hardisat, his secrets. Play it that way. Neil nods and just sort of quietly whispers to Britta, I mean, that's what I've been saying all along, right? We're nobody. Our victories are his victories. Our abilities are useful to him, not to us. That's that's how you keep your head down, and no one pays attention to you, and nobody snuffs you out. Um, the trick's going to be getting Miles to do that. And Britta backs off. Because to speak any longer would be to draw more attention. Mm -hmm. I'm going to assume that there is no way to speak to Miles without eyes all over that. Well, as you head towards that main area, there's a number of kindred gathered. Seated in his throne is Justicar Lucinde. Over her head is a painting of Miles' Diablery streaks. It's no longer in my office. It is no longer in your office. All right. Jan Peter Zun is present. There are also six unnamed Archons that are present. Bell is nowhere to be seen. Essentially, after uh, making the two bows, I'm currently probably... She's high enough level that I'm probably kneeling, waiting for whatever next part of acknowledgement is coming. Which may take five, ten, I don't know. A long period of time. Who knows? Prince Davenport, she finally says. Your power? An important note. Over her hands is a pair of red gloves. Like red, like very soft leather driving gloves. Within the next hour, you are to be transported to Hartford. There the war council will begin. Very good. You may select an entourage of up to seven kindred who will join you. Select them now. Neil Foster, Johnny Saxon, Wynne Cabot, Britta Ashcroft. Are these four kindred your choice? Yes. She very subtly tilts her head, and one of these archons steps away from the group and calls out, Come forward if you are these four kindred. Seems like we do so. Wynne steps forward, putting on a pair of aviators. Neil steps forward with some panicky hesitation, as does Johnny. Britta tries to take the hesitation in the group and wear it with grace. If she can, in her countenance, make that hesitation seem like submission, kind of walk forwards exactly in the proper way that she has seen Miles demonstrate so well and hope to make the littlest difference. Your grace, you are to proclaim your allegiance to the Camarilla. I proclaim my allegiance to the Camarilla. As you do that, you feel the sudden urge to confess any sins. (laughs) 
the destruction of Roland's and the way that it came about was not the way I wanted to. The not following of my instinct that did not allow me to persecute the Sabbat spy here quick enough. The dragging of my best friend into a life that ultimately cost him his own. I think Miles looks a little bit less tall, a little bit more shrunken in after that, but he still keeps his head, still kneeled, still bowed. Very well, Kingslayer. Choose who among your group shall come forward next. Britta. Britta steps forward. Declare your loyalty to the Camarilla. I declare my loyalty to the Camarilla. And you find yourself overcome with the urge to confess your sins against the Camarilla. I was embraced without right of progeny. I was involved in deaths that were not given right of destruction. I was a member of a Gana cult. And as those words leave her mouth, there's the clear instinct to defend herself and to say more, but she holds it back, eyes wide, uncertain of what to do. Jan Peterson and his companions seem to make deliberate effort towards not reacting with any facial expressions when Britta says her piece. Kingslayer. Choose who of your companions will come forward next. Johnny Saxon. So Johnny Saxon steps forward bef- before the Council of Justicar and Archons. You, Johnny Saxon of the Bra. Declare your loyalty to the Camarilla. I declare my loyalty to the Camarilla. And then you are compelled to confess your sins against the Camarilla. I was complicit in the destruction of Shaw, Clan Nosferatu. I was complicit in the ambush and destruction of Prince Rollins. I obstructed the investigation of the Scourge Renwick. And I provided audience to Prince Pendragon to allow him to make provision for Diablerie in New York. Kingslayer, choose who among your companions will come forward next. Neil Foster. Neil walks forward, shaking, just completely shaking, and kneels and presents himself before the Justicar. Neil Foster of the Malkavians, declare your loyalty to the Camarilla. I am loyal to the Camarilla. I... Obtained and read passages of the Book of Nod. I hid my personal ties and continued communication with the children of Hakim. And I am responsible for the death of Marcos, one of a member of the Camarilla's ghouls. Miles, at difficulty nine, I'm going to need you to make a self-control check. Christ. (sighs) Two successes. With two successes, you maintain control of yourself. But whatever you are feeling, anyone can read on your face. What do they see? I think mostly that I've continued to look at the ground, clenched my fist that is on the ground as I'm kneeling harder and my fangs have extended past the point of my mouth, but I have not moved much else. Neil is not looking anywhere near Miles, cannot bring himself to do it. Doesn't even occur to him. After his turn, almost needs to be reminded to move. Johnny, whose jaw is almost on the floor, just kind of staring in like confusion slowly reaches out, puts a hand on your shoulder, and kind of guides you back away from Miles. He's pliable and easy to move. Britta sneaking looks at Miles, trying to figure out what she could possibly do to help him. 
seeing that he has kept control of himself. She tries to make her presence quiet, doesn't want to interrupt proceedings, but keeps on checking on him. Kingslayer, present your final companion. Win Cabot. Win, if she had been nervous about speaking before this council of folks, uh, has had her attention sufficiently deterred by Neil's confession. She knows there's more to the story because she and Neil were alone in the bathroom with Marcos and he had asked for privacy afterwards. But that's not a thing we're going to be able to talk about right now. And when makes it a point to kneel beside Miles in a show of support. Win Cabot of the Gangrel. Declare your loyalty to the Camarilla. I'm loyal to the Camarilla. You feel the urge to confess your sins against the Camarilla? And there is silence. And in that space... Wynn puts her hand on Miles' shoulder and gives a brief squeeze before returning to herself. Justicar gives a nod, as if coming to a decision. Miles Davenport, child of Jan Peterson, child of Hardestat the Elder. Above me is a portrait. Is it an accurate portrait of you? There is some truth to that painting. How much? Enough. It's complicated. It is not. Fine. The office of the Venture Justicarian received a detailed dossier regarding your history, Miles Davenport, and the shenanigans you have engaged in within this domain. You have taken from the Camarilla. And so it must take from you. Do you understand? Yes. Do you accept this judgment? Am I allowed to say anything? She seems like she doesn't want to, but then decides to give a nod. You have the floor for one minute. Thank you, you power. Everything I've done has been to fortify and secure this domain as instructed by my sire. Not the specific details, but the overall goal. He told me it was important to the path to breaking the Sabbat. I was informed that New Haven needed to be strong with the coming of the other displaced princes and the eventual Sabbat siege. And I used my best judgment to do so. If the Camarilla wills it, then I obey. And this holds true for your companions as well? We fought long and hard for this city. Even tonight we are hunting the mole for the Sabbat, Marcus Vitell. Then your judgment is this. You owe the Camarilla a kindred, a companion. I choose Win Cabot from your companions. She is no longer a member of your domain. She is no longer yours. From henceforth, she is mine. Your companion, Win Cabin, shall stay with me for a period of three nights. She will swear the oath to be an archon, and she shall serve my office. From now until the end of her own life. You hold your position as a matter of privilege. Remember that. 
I nod my head in acknowledgement. She stands up. The archons come closer to her. Now, the vehicles are waiting. Let us journey to Hartford and prepare for your battle. You may rise. I rise at her command. I am ready to go. When the announcement was made, Wynne's face... It, she's, she's not going to try and hide it. Her aviators may hide some of it, but her face distinctly says, What the fuck? Path of Night is a Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. Britta Ashcroft, the Toreador, was played by Rebecca Segelfess. Johnny Saxon, the Bruja, was played by Garrett Gabby. Miles Savinport, the Venture, was played by Tim Davis. Neil Foster, the Malkavian, was played by Rob Muirhead. Wynn Cabot, the Gangrel, was played by Erica Webb. Your storyteller was Lex Lopez. Recording by Rebecca Stagelfest. This episode edited by Rob Muirhead. The music used in this episode was composed for Path of Night by Brian Metolius. Find him online at brianmetolius.com. Path of Night uses the 20th anniversary edition of Vampire the Masquerade with a few limited house rules. Vampire the Masquerade and the World of Darkness are owned by Paradox Interactive. Make sure to subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. We can be found on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Path of Night. You can help support the show on coffee.com slash Path of Night. Find us on twitter.com slash Path of Night Pod, on facebook.com slash Path of Night Podcasts, or email us at Path of Night Podcasts at gmail.com. See you next time, Kindred. Define sins that I should be confessing to. Seems like I've never done anything wrong. <laughs> Not have done a single thing Any wrong. bad things you think Miles has done? <laughs> Miles saved by his Whoa. own ego and morality. <laughs> I've never done a thing wrong in my life. <laughs> 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 Need a minute, Tim? <laughs> I'm having a hard time with this. <laughs> this is really coming to me. <laughs> uh. How? Question for you. How much humanity did you lose from the Diablery? Two. One. He oh, made his check, oh, which did, means yeah. you felt bad. Yeah. Mm. So things that you have, if you're just looking at it that way, things that you have felt, felt bad, bad about doing, uh, chopping the dude's arm off in mm. season one, mm. you failed that, or you I passed understand, that check. but feeling bad isn't the same as doing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you got a point in your mouth, motherfucker. Commi- I mean, committing, uh, committing the diablery. Yeah, but I committed to it, so like I don't Ow. like it wasn't a wish washy about it. No, no, no. That's you committing to the act an act of sin, yeah. knowing that it's wrong. If anything, you have confirmed that you think that's a sin by saying that. I think that might be I, the dude's <laughs> arm. He's he got another one. He's fine. Mean, Aren't I totally agree on? That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Any other stuff having to do with like. Being Zofiel. chill with the demon and I mean, Zofiel. you might not feel bad about any of that. You might think you you actually feel on top of the demon. Uh, you, honestly, if it's going by what you feel bad about, and ergo we're interpreting that as guilt, do you feel guilt about letting Marcos's killer get away? Or, or just oh cool because she it was sins right. So like anything that you think you've done, like anything that you think your sire or yourself probably. At Actually, least, honestly, would it, think is like not okay. The, Lex, would you mind giving some more uh, feedback on terms of like what you are considering sins here? Because let's say regrets and or things you wish you didn't have to do. Do I get to pick the wording on this? Uh, you may not intentionally word it in a way meant to be deceptive. No, it's unfortunate. <laughs> kind of how this works I don't know how it works I don't have this power I don't know what it is what is this power? gloves uh, it is technically the aura of inescapable truth oh uh, okay yeah, some, I do know this one with some buffs oh with some extra buffs on top yeah. oh boy mm.